So you're diving into record collecting and you're finding you're really enjoying yourself. You got a nice little collection going. Well, now it's time to show you the proper ways to take care of those records to make sure they last as long as they possibly can. We're going to talk all about that here on today's episode of Todd's Turntable Talk. Welcome everyone to another episode of Todd's Turntable Talk. Before we get started, as always, if it's your first time on the channel or if you just haven't had a chance to yet, please make sure and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification, both located underneath this video to let you know when a new episode drops on our channel. So today we are going to do something that is very important to me and should be important to everyone else as well. And that is go through the steps to really make sure and take care of your records and make sure they last a really good long time. One of the most important factors, cleaning them. Even if you get a brand new record, you still need to clean it because sometimes from the pressing plant, you still get static. You could get little particles of things on your records. So you wanna make sure and clean every record that you get. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I clean my records, as well as give you a couple other pieces of advice I've seen from other great YouTubers around that I've also found really works well. And for today's episode, for the demonstration, I'm going to be using my vintage copy of the Beatles' White Album. This is a pressing from 1968, and I want to make sure it's always in really good shape. So, we're going to be taking this album out, and we're going to be cleaning it, and you can do it with any record you have right along with me. Now, first thing you want to do is make sure you have a nice, hard, flat surface. You don't want to be pushing down on your records and it being on a weird surface because you could cause warp or any other kind of damage that you want to try to avoid. Next, you're going to want to find a soft cloth or a towel to put underneath your record. I like to use a microfiber, but you can get other kinds as well for fairly cheap. This is to have a nice soft surface for your record to sit on to avoid scratching and things like that as you're cleaning your record. The first thing you're going to want to get, and I get my supplies from turntableneedles.com. They're not a sponsor of this episode yet, fingers crossed. Hopefully they might be eventually in the future. They have wonderful products, really great prices. I, I love it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna get is this carbon fiber cleaner. It has small fiber brushes and it has small little carbon fiber brushes. This is to get any dust, dirt, particles, things like that off the surface of your record before you clean it. You don't want to start cleaning before using this because if there is dust or dirt or grime or anything on your records, putting any sort of wet liquid on there and starting to clean it is going to kind of turn that into mud. It's going to get into your grooves and the records aren't going to get as clean as you'd like them to get. So we're going to take this brush very gently on the record. We're going to place it down and move it in a counterclockwise motion the same way that the vinyl spins on your record. And then you just take your brush and it's got this little plastic thing underneath, give it a couple flicks, and all the dirt and dust that are on the brushes is now gone. Next comes the cleaning of the record, what we call a wet cleaning. Now there's a few methods you can use. I personally use a record cleaner as well as a cleaning liquid that comes with the record cleaner. When I started, a really good friend turned me on to trying just simple cotton balls and isopropyl alcohol that you can get at any local drugstore, pharmacy, or grocery store. Make sure it's 70%, but it works pretty well. You can just put a little bit of the alcohol on the cotton ball in a gentle pressure motion, run it across your record in the same counterclockwise motion, and you will notice it gets a lot of dirt and stuff off of the record. It works pretty well. The only problem that I noticed with that after some time is the cotton balls will sometimes leave pieces of themselves behind, even really small that you might not notice, and you end up having to dust the record off again and almost every time you use it. Now, if you don't mind that, it's a really great cheap way to do it. I definitely recommend it. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get what is called a disc duster. I, again, got this from turntableneedles.com. I think I paid about 15 bucks altogether for this package. And what it is, it's a little rectangular wooden, usually on one side, and a velvety soft 
uh, cloth material on the other side. Usually they come with a kind of record cleaning fluid. This is a uh, Fanstat anti-static record cleaning fluid. Pretty good size bottle and I've been using it for a little while now and it's still pretty full. And I paid I think about 15 bucks for the whole thing. And it also comes with a small brush. Now this is not to clean your needle. There's different things for that. This is to clean off your disc duster once you've used it. And we'll show you all about that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cleaning fluid, you're gonna mist it over your record. Then, with your disc duster, in the same way you did with a carbon fiber brush, you're going to very gently run it around your disc in a counterclockwise direction. I try to go over it at least a couple times to get up as much excess as I can, so there's not a lot left over when we're done. And then when you're done with that side, you're gonna take your handy little brush and your disc duster and we're just gonna brush it off. This gets a lot of the dirt and things like that off of it so you can flip the record over and do the same thing again. Now, once you're done with that, your record should be pretty clean. You might wanna let it sit for a little bit to let the remaining cleaner evaporate off before you put it on your turntable and start listening. You don't wanna put a record on there wet because it could still do some slight damage and you don't want any damage to this. And I definitely recommend anytime you put a record on the turntable anyway, even after cleaning, give it one more little dusting with that carbon fiber brush. And anytime you put a record on there that you know has already been cleaned, dust it anyway, because you never know what could get on the record right before you play it. So last but certainly not least, now it's time to put the records away. You need somewhere to put the records. One thing you don't ever, 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 ever want to do is stack your records. You don't want to store them in a pile because they'll get compressed and the pile will eventually warp all the records in said pile. We don't want to do that. Record warp is very bad. Another thing that people like to use is milk crates. Milk crates are all right um, because your records are standing vertically, so there's no pressure being put on them. But what I don't like about milk crates is they have all the holes in it and they're just big enough. So when you are going through the records in the milk crate, Sometimes your corners might snag or the spine might scrape against it. And after a while, the outer cover gets damaged. If you can spend the money, I recommend getting specific storage shelves for your vinyl. You can find them very cheap in very many places. This I purchased at Target and it's a four space setup here. And I think I paid about 50 bucks for it. And it's very sturdy wood. It's really great space. It's a little taller, so the records have a lot of room to move. And it was really, really simple to put together. I'll put the link to it in the descriptions of this video if you wanna check it out for yourself. And you don't wanna pack them in. You don't want them super packed together where you don't have any open space. You wanna be able to flip through the records with a fairly good amount of ease because if you have them super packed in and you're pushing records aside, you're bending your records. Before you put them in, there's one more thing that you need to get. That is these 12 inch outer album cover sleeve. Now, this is a 50 pack. I believe I got this off of Amazon and I'll put a link to that in the descriptions as well. And they're clear outer sleeves made out of polyethylene. And I recommend the three millimeter thick ones. They do make thinner ones, but the paper thin ones, I don't know if it's just a superstition on my part, but they don't, they don't, they don't feel as right. I don't know. I, th I think the thicker ones offer a little bit more protection in the long run and they'll last longer. But every one of them is basically just this little sleeve here. What we'll do now that we've got it cleaned, I'm gonna take my copy of the White Album here. And what we do is we put the record in bottom first. That way the record sits nice inside. You can pull it right out. And then we just put it over here where it goes in the alphabetizing there. And the record is put away safely. Definitely hope this video has been helpful. If you have any tips yourself that you all would like to share with us, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them whenever I can. And we'll see you all next time on Todd's Turntable Talk.